So welcome to Techno Dad Life and my name is Jeff and so today we're going to take you on a little journey and show you how to install a new BIOS on your TerraMaster so that you can actually run multiple operating systems or just the operating system that you want without any problems. So uh, I think a few years ago, I have no idea when this thing came out, I did a video about installing Open Media Vault on it. And so since then, it's just been sitting around because what ends up happening is you have to sort of finagle it, I'll show you in a little bit, to actually boot up in your OS of choice whenever you want to use it. And so of course I forgot about this and it's just been sh sitting on a shelf actually since I did that video. But I was like, why don't I install Casa OS on this? And that is the start of my journey. And so basically it's super easy to install an OS on here and you can follow my last video to do that. But to get it to boot up consistently, it won't do that. And so because of that, I have spent the last several days Googling and trying things out to find a solution. And I would think I found a solution and then I would reboot and then uh, basically it wouldn't work again. And so, uh, We'll go through a couple different things here. So we'll follow my sort of thought process. So the first thing that I wanted to do was install COS OS. And so in order to do that, uh, you have to install Debian. And so this is pretty straightforward. So you download the Debian, get the net install. So next you want to open up your case. And so there's just four screws that you need. So we'll take out those, lift off the top, and then you need to pull out this fan header. And then you can pull off the top of the case. <clears throat> and now you can see our system here. And so basically, the first thing that we need to do is take out this USB drive because that is where the OS is. Pretty simple, although it's hard the first time you do it. Now at this point you can install an operating system and so basically we're going to install Debian which is the again the basis of COS OS. So next we'll plug everything in. And so for this, we need HDMI, uh, power supply. So we'll need an Ethernet cable, a keyboard. And then we can plug in the power. So if we turn on our system, we need to hit delete to get into the BIOS. And so sorry, this is uh, using a camera, but the HDMI on this particular device doesn't seem to be powerful enough to send it through to the splitter. So this is what we got. So if we go over to boot, we go down to hard disk, Hit enter, and so we want that to be USB device. Then we can go over to exit, and then we can save changes and exit. And then save configuration. And so the idea here is we want to be able to boot from our, we want to be able to boot from our USB device that we plug in. Then so from here we just install Debian like normal and then uh, once it's installed uh, we can pull out, turn off the uh, computer and pull out our USB drive. And then we can turn on our computer again and let's see what happens. And so here you can see it's going, instead of going to our Debian system, it's 
going back into the Terry Master OS, which we don't want. So how do we get around that? So you can change different BIOS settings, but it always comes back to either to booting into the Terra Master OS or erroring out. And so when the error message happens, then you're going to need this guy right here. So basically, uh, he does videos about the EFI shell, or at least this video, which was the only one that actually made sense or was helpful. Uh, look him up if you ever see this sort of yellow type when you are having a BIOS problem. Though I learned a lot from him, from Exit Zero, uh, it didn't actually solve the problem. And so uh, what we did, or what I did, is I installed the Debian OS to uh, the M.2 drive and even though it was installed to that dry, it would always come to a EFI shell sort of panic where it wanted something else to do. Now, I tried multiple different things, which I did not film, but again, I did this over several days. But finally, I came upon something. So on the TerraMaster forums, there's this post, uh, can't set the boot sequence in BIOS, but only boot from the TOS disk. And so basically, this, I don't know why this isn't one of the, the sort of top posts or something like that, but I actually had to dig a lot for this. And it's not obvious where it is. And I only found it by, uh, for some reason, uh, Googling the motherboard number on my motherboard and this came up. It didn't come up when I was searching boot things on uh, TerraMaster forums. There. So with this one, basically it's only for certain NASAs. So these ones up here and basically uh, there's three different la downloads depending on your system. So mine's at F2423 so I downloaded this one. Next, you need to get a good USB drive and make sure it's blank. And so that file you downloaded, you're going to unzip it and then copy it to this blank USB drive. Next, you're going to unplug all your drives from your TerraMaster. So not just your hard drives, but also your M.2 drives on top there. So if you have any of these, you have to take those off. Oh, and I almost forgot the most important part when you format this drive is it has to be in a FAT file system. And so it does mention this in the directions, but it's not very obvious. Once you have all your drives out, then uh, install your USB drive and turn on your system and when you do make sure you're hitting delete because uh, what ends up happening is it boots really fast. And I'm going to start it and hit delete. There we go. So for this next part you're going to go down to USB drive BBS priorities, hit enter, and so we're going to change disable to our drive. And so for me, it's the Samsung flash drive. Hit enter. Then escape. And then F4 and then save configuration. Now, the next process that happens is it erases your, erases your BIOS. And so uh, it's actually, I haven't felt this much anxiety in a long time, uh, but it does it very quickly. And when you see it says erasing uh, flash memory, uh, it did cause a little panic in me. So just be aware of that. So once it's done doing that, pull out that flash drive. And then we're going to reinstall it in the computer and we're going to delete everything but two folders. One is the EFI folder, and the other one is the DMI Edit EFI 64 folder. 
And then we're going to put it back into the computer and turn that on. And then in the next step, we're going to use some of that knowledge we gained from exit zero earlier. Basically, I didn't get any video of this next section because I was panicking. So we're going to type in fs0 colon and then ls to see the contents of that folder. And there you'll see the DMI edit EFI 64. And so we want to change to that directory. So we'll type in cd uh, DMI edit EFI 64 and then hit enter. And then we'll type in ls again so we see the contents of that. And so then there we see the uh, AMI DEFI x64 dot EFI, and that's actually what we want. And so type in that uh, AMI DEFI x64 dot EFI space slash SP space 000 dash, and then your particular model. And so for me, mine is the F2423, so that's why you see that there. Uh, there's no spaces or dashes in that, so you just write it all as one word. And then dash NT140-001. And then hit enter. And then you'll see this AMI desktop management interface utility. And then you can turn off your NAS now and then uh, put all your drives back. Pull out your USB drive. You can turn on your NAS and hit delete a lot. So from the fast boot menu, we want to go down to the bottom where it says toss first, hit enter and up arrow and enter to disable that. And then we want to go over to boot. And so for us, we want to put the NVMe first. And then we want to go to Eufy Ufi NVMe drive BPS priorities, hit enter, hit enter again, and then we want the Debian, hit enter, and we can escape. And for right now, we're going to turn off or disable boot from our hard drives because those have the TOS OS on them and then escape. Then we go over to exit, save changes and exit, hit enter, and then save and yes. And let's see what happens when we reboot. And this system does take a little while to reboot too. I don't know why that is. It doesn't seem like it should be, but you know, it's meant to be on all the time. And there we have the Debian bootloader. So it will just start. And we were successful. Yay! And that's how you update the BIOS to set your boot preferences in a TerraMaster NAS. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. See you next time and have a great day. Bye bye.